Hello everybody, it's the Cursing Seamstress, long time no see. Um, I have found a wonderful pattern that I wanted to share with you today. I'm wearing it. Um, it's a pattern by Seamwork. Seamwork and Colette patterns are together under a single umbrella. I used to be a member um, and I, I stayed a member for a year and then I stopped being a member. Um, but you can still buy patterns from their site. So I bought two patterns. I bought a pattern called the Desi, um, D-E-S-I, and I bought a pattern called the Georgia. And this is the Georgia. Um, this is, I'm looking at my computer, it's called, um, it's number 3064. It's called a two-tone shift. And it is really cute. Um, it's simple to make. It's an opportunity to use two different fabrics together, a fabric for the bodice and then for the bottom. Um, it is, well, Colette and Seamwork have all, always been very generous with their sizing. I initially started cutting out a 14 because I was sort of in between and uh, realized uh, when I was able to try it on and take a look at um, early on and I could see that I could go ahead and cut it down, and I did. I'm making a second one now, and I'm cutting a 12. Um, so essentially what I have on now is a size 12. The, um, just a few things about it. Um, it's a sort of a boat neck. There is a facing here. Um, stitch in the ditch right here to uh, keep the facing down. Today's the first day I'm wearing this. Um, Sleeves are set in sleeves. With the second one, I am going to see if I can do the sleeves um, in the flat. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Uh, the sleeves do call for uh, not gathering, but just um, oh, putting in some fullness. And when I did that, I found that I actually had to pull most of that out. Um, so there's no gathering, there's really, to the naked eye, there's no, um, you know, fullness in, in the top at all. Um, but you might have to do a little bit of that with a large stitch, and that might be enough because my machine, if I take off the, um, I've got an automatic, it's called a dual feed on a faff, so if I take off that dual feed, and stitch it with a long stitch, it sort of automatically um, condenses that um, area that needs to be um, made fuller. So, um, and I really don't like a gathered sleeve, so I'm happy that they're not. Um, Empire Waist here, there is a curve here, and then it curves down on the side. The bottom is shaped like this. So it's, an in, it's a U, kind of a U shape. It comes up at the side. It um, easily could be converted into just a straight hem. The pattern is very short. Um, I added two inches and there is a spot to do that. So, um, and I'm very happy with the length. Um, let's see what else I can tell you. You do need a, a drapier fabric for the bottom, although it is not an A-line, so if you were to use a less drapey fabric, it's not going to stick out, you know, and make you look like a cartoon paper doll or something. Um, the fabric, just as far as, there are no darts, by the way. I think for the larger sizes, um, there there is, um, it's a different, it's a different bodice and, um, you, uh, there is a place for darts. Um, let's see what else I can tell you about it. Oh, if the, the next one I make, which I've already got cut out, except for the, the skirt part, um, I think instead of using a facing, I will just use um, bias tape, the same for the sleeves, and maybe the same for the hem. 
I did um, use my serger almost everywhere. Um, and I think you would need to do that probably. There is stay stitching here um, and stay stitching around the facings. I think I've covered everything about the pattern in general, specific to what I made. This, um, the, the bodice here is made from a tablecloth that I got from one of my mother's drawers. She has tons of tablecloths beautiful linens and uh, this one I think I think this one was dyed I'm not sure but I think brown is an unusual color to have for a tablecloth so I don't think it naturally came that way I think somebody dyed it I don't think my mother did um, but it's just a real pretty shade of brown I'll get a close-up um, it has been used many times and washed many times um, so I didn't feel bad about making the first Georgia dress from this because I knew it would be okay if I messed up on it or if it didn't fit or whatever. But um, it's very wearable. I'm wear wearing it to work today. Um, so I do think there's a little bit of fragileness to this. The, um, the right side of this tablecloth was less worn for some reason. Um, I'll get a close-up and show you. The lower fabric is a cotton floral and it's very old, um, it's very beautiful, it's very soft and very drapey. Um, I made a dress for my daughter out of the same fabric when she was four years old. My daughter is 36 now. And this fabric was not bought new. I think I must have gotten it from, maybe my mother had it, or I got it from a thrift store, although I don't remember buying fabric from thrift stores that long ago. Um, I just, I don't remember doing that. I bought a lot of clothes, a lot of other things, but I don't specifically remember buying fabric. So I don't know where the fabric came from, but it's likely this fabric is 40 or 50 years old. So it's a little bit fragile too, um, but you know, this dress probably won't last a zillion years. Um, but I'm gonna stand up and show it to you. I highly recommend this pattern. I'll show you what I'm making my next one from. And um, this fabric right here, this is, um, trying to think what this is. It's a, a cotton, it's a cotton fabric. It's a little stiff. Um, it would probably not be appropriate for the bottom because it is kind of stiff, but it's absolutely appropriate for the bodice part. So this is the sleeve. I did um, stitch, like I said, I took off the um, dual feed and just stitched it with one long stitch here. And this is probably too much. I'm probably gonna have to pull this out to make it fit into the arm's eye. But I thought this was really pretty. This was from a um, thrift store. I did not buy this new. The fabric that's gonna go with it is a fabric that I've actually made. I made a style art dress from, which I love. Um, and I had a bunch left over. This was also a thrift store purchase. It's this, I don't know what it is. I think it's a rayon, it's a pinky. It's much deeper and pinker than a flesh tone, but it goes really well with, um, with this. The lighter tones in this, oh gosh, my lighting is so bad, um, match up really well. It's hard to, hard to see that, but it does. So I'm going to stand up and let you see this dress. It's um, all over the head, no fasteners, um, very comfortable. I wash this dress because I always use uh, water soluble markers to, to mark front, back and all of that kind of stuff. So let me get myself situated and stand up. I apologize for the condition of my sewing room. It always looks this way. Um, I did sweep, but I need to sweep again. So hold on and you can get a full view of this dress. 
this is it. And this is again with two inches added. Um, it's just really cute. It's loose, but I don't think it's too loose. I have plenty, plenty of wiggle room here. It's just really a nice dress and um, it's just so comfortable and easy. And I, I like easy patterns. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not a super easy to sew, but it's pretty easy to sew. The hem is, um, the hem, anytime you're sewing uh, a hem that is not a straight hem, you have to be a little bit careful and coming up on the side here where it goes up. I mean, you have to be careful. All I did was to serge it and then turn it up once and stitch it down, iron it, pin it, stitch it down, and it did really well. So that's it. Um, I encourage you to go look at the seamwork uh, patterns. They've got a lot of good ones. I think I paid $12 for this pattern. Um, and again, for me to start working right away on a second one says a lot. I do, I do like it a lot. So, all right, you guys take care. Have a great day and a great weekend. Bye-bye.